we have about uh, 10 minutes uh, or so left for our panel if we're going to try to bring it in on time. And I see about 17 hands shooting up instantly. Um, so why don't we take maybe, uh, wait, wait, uh, why don't we take maybe two or three questions uh, and then give the chance uh, to answer. Uh, and then we'll go back out for a couple of questions. So uh, let's, I see one hand waving here. Let's take your question. Let's do one and then the, the woman here, two. Uh, and then three, let's do that, yeah? And then we'll come back around. And please uh, identify yourself and, and let us know who your question is for and keep the questions brief. Uh, they end with a question mark. Thank you. Yeah, actually, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, this is Tenzin Pinto representing the Tibetan delegation. Actually, I have five, six questions burning inside me. One, please. One, the four questions. <laughs> um, Choose the, choose the most important one. Yeah, yeah, I, I already burned the remaining one. <laughs> uh, some of you said that, nice off the screen. Uh, some of you said that you have a very really lesser representation of women in the parliament or the legislature. I was guessing how many populations of women that you have in your respective countries, because almost it will be the same, even though the females may be lesser, because that percentage or the number of population may vote for the women. So that's how come it is uh, getting a little bit of contradictory. And uh, one last question. You can answer any one of them. I, want, I don't want anyone to answer the both questions, but you can answer the one. And the second question that I have is, I have that experience in Tamil Nadu when I studied in Chennai College, that the more people get richer when they move from the lower class uh, to the middle class, the lesser they take part in the political process. So I'm just trying to tell you that the more you get economic opportunities to become uh, richer or whatever economic opportunities that you get, and don't you feel sometimes the more you feel that like you don't want to partake in the political process, that why, that's what I've seen in Tamil Nadu, for example, but you may have a different view. And one humble suggestion I have for the next moderator, whoever it will be, if you put lesser questions, we may get more time to ask questions. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, no, no, I'm saying that you can ask questions, but if you put lesser questions and give it more to the audience, because there are more minds here, I guess. And uh, Salima, thank you for inspiring me to join okay, my well, wife. Well, let's, so let's, <laughs> thank you. Let's, let's give them a chance to respond, please. All right, so, so let's go to the woman here. Uh, the, the, there was a woman here with the next question. Each one may have to answer. No, no, one person will answer. Thank you so much, and I'm very happy to see a very confident woman. Uh, my question is actually, uh, how can we deal the question of economic empowerment of those who are unseeable, unapproachable people who are considered as a Dalit people, and their skills and potentialities, actually, they are very limited within the caste, just because they are born to Dalit community. So how can we come out with this caste trap? questions to all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take one more. Um, let's take one more from the gentleman here, and then we'll give folks a chance to answer, and then we'll do a second round of questions. I have uh, an observation, I'm sure. A, a question, please. That's an observation. A question, please. I'm sorry, it has to be corrected. There was a presentation made. I hope it was a slip. OK, go ahead. Please. Please, please go ahead with your question. Thanks. Chair, but there are, there are comments passed, there are observations passed, which is not the reality in this country. It has to be pointed out. This is an international gathering. There might have been a mistake, it might have been a slip, but we don't have 33% representation for women in parliament. And it was mentioned, so I have to correct this. I don't want my friends to go saying that 33% It was not parliament. It was not in parliament. No, no, no. no. It was 11.6 I made in Parliament, and I said at Panchayati level. Yeah, at Panchayati right. No, no, 36% I said in certain states. 33.6% in certain states. Please let 
not argue on that. I said 11 points six in Parliament. Thank you, madam. I'm not arguing. I only wanted it to be clarified. Yeah, I said Thank that. Thank would, would any of the other panelists like to respond to some of the other questions? That were raised? Uh, I, um, um, I, I like that uh, the lead questions. You know, uh, everything is possible dealing with human being. You know, I have worked with uh, you know cedar affected people. Uh, everything was uh, uh, was washed away in Charankola and Taltuli. And I remember the, 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 the founder was saying, Cinema, we need something sustainable. And I said, I know a woman, an entrepreneur. And we trained, and now they are entrepreneur. So anyone, sometimes we say everyone cannot be entrepreneur, but many can be entrepreneur. So you have to give them training, capacity building training, facilitate them how to access the market uh, and design product uh, development and um, help them, assist them. And you can do it. And we have to, I've worked with uh, transgender people. I am now actually working with a Dalit group. So I can tell you later on that what we have done. So yeah, it's a very great uh, question. And would, would, yeah, um, I think the, the question about um, how moving up sort of the value chain affects people's political participation, I think Rifa wanted to handle that one. Uh, was the question is it uh, proportionate uh, is uh, to the to uh, the population was that the question the first question yeah with regard to that in sri lanka the population is over 50% uh, women population but you have to be nominated by uh, your parties to be uh, elected so the nomination process does not take place uh, with regard to women that is what uh, the low representation signifies yeah, same in, in Bangladesh, you know, we have 50, someone said 51 percent, but uh, the nomination process is, 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 is difficult. Um, the, uh, and someone was saying that, you know, the money, uh, the businessmen, the rich businessmen are entering into, into politics. So we are thinking to make more rich businesswomen so that they can enter into <laughs> politics. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think that's the same yeah, cases yeah. in India where they same said that you know you don't have too many women representation, about eleven point six percent. While it's doing better at the panchayati level, that's the grassroots level. I think that's a, where, that's, yeah. a, that's a great. And let's take another round of questions. Um, so we've got the gentleman. Where was it? Oh, the gentleman who really wanted to ask a question left. Uh, <laughs> let's start with the young man here who's got his hand way up in the air, and then the gentleman here at the. Uh, uh, Wait. So the gem, the gentleman here, and then, oh, and then the the, the woman back there with the glasses. So let's let's start with this guy, and then this woman here. All right. Oh, but let's let's start with it. Can we have the, the young man here? Was oh, his microphone's not working. Then we'll defer to the two ladies here. Okay. Yes, I'll, uh, given the time uh, constraint, I'll be very, you know, it's a very short question, but there's a galaxy of ladies there, so I thought it's very important that I ask them, all of them, do you believe in reservation? Does reservation empower women? Because my opinion is to the contrary. Like, even if I got anything on merit, there's, I mean, you know, there's reservation. In US, I faced that. They said, oh, you've got a fellowship because you are a lady. I said, I'm a foreigner. It's French for reservation is for Americans. So, you know, I personally feel that psychologically it pulls you down rather than, but, you know, I, I like your... Yeah, I think that's, I mean, if I could just very quickly comment on that, um, and then we'll go back to, you know, at SIPE, we debate this issue very frequently. We have, we work in many countries, uh, just an example of Pakistan, we work uh, with women's chambers of commerce, but we also work to improve women's representation within the mainstream chambers of commerce, or what they sometimes call the men's chambers. Um, so I think that you have to you have to tackle both sides. What was the the second? I'll, I'll just yeah, answer please. this in one yeah, line. Please. In Pakistan, we have reached this con conclusion that at this point we will not ask for equality; we will ask for equity. So when we get reached there, when we become uh, uh, equally equitable, situation is there. At this point, we'll make use of the reserve seats, and we'll be there on the open merits also. So we'll get make use of all the opportunities available there, more equity-based. Uh, second, we have uh, the, the woman with the other question. Yeah, both with glasses. Thank uh, you. My name is Sunita. Without getting into too much of introduction, I wish to ask the galaxy of women there the major deterrent that we face at the grassroots to induct women in the entrepreneurship arena 
is the support, the absence of the support structure at home. They want to get out, but where should they leave their children? My prime concern is children. And I do not know how to get women into this by telling them, okay, I don't know what you should do with your children. I have, I, in Delhi, we have mobile crash, which the van goes to the construction site, and that's the only institution I've heard in the city of Delhi, where there's a lot of talk about bank loans, entrepreneurship development, but there's no support structure. I would like uh, the, uh, the, the policy makers, people who can influence the policy, to please consider this and provide, make, at, at least, I may be unaware, but please make it visible. Where should they go? Who, Thank who, you. Would someone like to take that one? Uh, I, I think it's a very important uh, question you arise. Um, um, we, that's why we need to do lots of policy advocacy for having and supporting the woman, the mother, uh, to come it, to work, but the ch child is also in the safe. And uh, that's, I think, all are, we are working on towards it, and I'm sure this problem will be solved, and we have to work for it. I have an answer to that. Uh, yeah, uh, what I can say is that Pakistan has this policy, has been, uh, uh, has started this policy now this year. So we have a model, you can, we can share it with you, and you can go to your government and tell them. We do the same with Bangladesh. Whatever good happens in Bangladesh, we bring that model and take it to our policy makers, and we say, Bangladesh is doing this, why can't we do? So Pakistan is doing this, why can't India do this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think even in our own country, uh, one of the things that we frequently discuss with respect to women's entrepreneurship is the issue of, of, of uh, family commitments and childcare and the division of those commitments. So I, I don't think that this is an issue that is solely for discussion in South Asia. I would say that in the, in, in the West and in the US, it's certainly very much an issue that's still on the table. The, the young man, please. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, <coughs> my, uh, I'm, I'm Lovsang Seven. I'm one of the Tibetan delegates. My question is to uh, Ms. Rita Ji, who's from Nepal. Uh, being someone who's born and brought up in Nepal, the Tibetan community in Nepal is very much restricted and it's sort of like what? a marginalized <laughs> Tibetan community where government has imposed so much restriction, uh, where the, the sources are limited, not just in the field of politics, but also in economics. But my, so my question is, um, so women being marginalized in all the communities, how do, uh, say, Tibetan women who are marginalized within an already existing marginalized society how do they go about acquiring success in the field of, uh, you know, politics or economics, where there's very limited source? So, even though the question is to you, but then, like, I would love to hear all of your thoughts. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. First of all, let me just explain that sometimes it's not about just being poor, marginalized, or not having the opportunity. Uh, what we should see is, I have seen women who have come from very humble background and made it to the top. Let me tell you, there have been women who have just gone to school for three days and now have been awarded several awards for their, and they're very big business women. And similarly, when you talk about the Tibetan women who are in, uh, especially in Kathmandu, let's say, most of them are doing very well business, but many of them are still in the informal sector. They don't want to be registered because there's too many tax hassles and there are too many other formalities they have to fulfill. And uh, we have a member, in fact, one of our past presidents, who is also from a very Tibetan background. Uh, she even became a minister. She was an entrepreneur and became a minister. She has a trekking and a uh, trekking agency that she's running very successfully. So it's not always about not having the opportunity. Yes, it's very difficult because like some of the questions had already come, like when, where, uh, why don't women come, they can't leave their children, all these things. It's not that. They have to also come out and everybody gets similar opportunities. I hope I have answered your question. I, I just quickly want to say that, that, you know, platform is always very important because a single person can't do many things. I'm now work, working and talking uh, with my UNHCR colleagues to start 
entrepreneurship with the refugee group. Soon I'm, I'm going to do that also. So the entrepreneurship is one of the way to address the marginalized group to come out of their position, you know. We have, I think, time for, I, I got a little, yeah? Do we, do we have time for two more questions? Mona's giving me a. So can we take maybe one more question? Because this, this gentleman here has is, 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 uh, had his hand up for a very long time. I, I would like to seek an uh, enlightenment from the panel on the impact of two factors which have made quite an impact in East Asia. The first factor is uh, student loans for university students. Since the introduction of the loan scheme in East Asia, in the past two decades or so, we have more young women in university than young men, actually. And in fact, you have more young women in business administration faculty. So this is going to make an impact. I just want to know the situation in East Asia, in South Asia. The second, uh, question, the second factor is business entertainment culture. In East Asia, most top university graduates avoid joining the business. They tend to join the civil service because they feel that they may be handicapped in the corporate entertainment culture. So in places like Hong Kong, <coughs> Taiwan, and in, in Singapore, you now have women in the top civil service, but much less women serving as CEOs. And I just wonder, how do you handle this issue of business entertainment culture in South Asia? Thank you. Uh, you know, I teach also in the university, in the Dhaka University, in entrepreneurship. And I've seen lots of women who would like to come into entrepreneurship. But one of the things, again, come that resources. Uh, always father or the husband, um, father don't mind to give their properties to the son, but to a daughter they don't want to give. Uh, even the husband, the, when the family has money, husband gets a more a share of, of that money. So that's why, uh, again, we are working with the startup group and trying to um, talk with the government and the bank to give them access to finance because that's very important for the new, uh, new startup. And, and um, things have lots of problems. Uh, especially for the women, for the new entrepreneurship creation. Um, more women uh, seeing into the corporate culture also is, as a CEO, uh, it's difficult. Mm, and also the mindset that whether a woman will be able to do it. But we have seen whoever has been into that post as, as a woman has done great work. So we also need to uh, change our mind, uh, support the woman, because sometimes when women are going into that ladder, there's so many people are pulling her to get down. It's men, women, family, society, state. So everyone needs to support that particular young girl or woman. And having a gender-friendly environment is very important too. I think that's, a, I think that's an amazing uh, point to end on because um, there are many, many obviously questions and discussions that could go on around these issues for a very long time, but I would like to thank my panelists, uh, thank all of you for a very stimulating discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs>